Judges chapter 4 is only going to get worse. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. God sees. The Bible says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are every place. Behold, the evil comes first and the good. Why evil first? Because that's what we're prone to do. <laughs> when Ehud was dead. Now it's kind of funny because chapter 3 verses 12 to 30 was all about Ehud. And we get this one little verse in 31 about Shemgar. And then chapter 4 talks about Ehud again. It's like, I don't know what ever happened to Shemgar. He's the third judge. But 4-1, we go right back to Ehud. When he dead, no mention of Shemgar. And the Lord sold them in the hand of Jabin, the king of Cana. I thought Cana was supposed to be gone. Be careful with your sins. That reigned in Hazor, and the captain of whose host was Caesarea. Now Caesarea, he's the captain of Jabin. He's not the king, he's the captain. Like Naaman the Syrian was the captain, not the king. Which dwelt in harshness of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron. Well, I know a God in heaven that can destroy any. <coughs> He's able. But they didn't want to trust that God. And 20 years, he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. Now look how many years judges go through. Here's 20 years by Caesarea. Troubles and problems because they don't want to get right with God. How many years has America gone wrong and not going back to God? And Deborah, which means B. Deborah means B. Bumblebee. A prophetess. So there is a prophetess. There are women. Acts. 21 verse 9, Philip has daughters that prophesy. There is nothing wrong with a woman going out telling people what's going to happen in the future as far as the Bible. Now, I'm not talking about crystal ball and tarot cards. I'm talking about you go up to someone, you're dealing with their soul. Listen, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. And here the book of Judges would be, hey, you know, you guys, if you don't get back to God, it's only going to get worse. And that's what the, pro the prophecy comes down to is, you know, what, what is God going to do to you if you don't get right? Now, a woman's not to assert the authority over a man. She's to be quiet when a man is speaking. Or a proper order. The wife of Lapidoth. She judged Israel at that time. So here's a judge. That's a woman. Now, we're not Americanized time in the Old Testament. Women did not have the position of authority. And here God says, listen, things are so bad. I got to call a woman out. How the, then that would be degrading to the nation of Israel that God has to use a woman. Now, I know Americans don't like that thought, but that it is. A woman would have no authority in anything that deals with government or mission of God. And here she is. Why? Because the men, they're weak. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah. So there's a place between R Ramah and Bethel. Bethel is where, where Jacob started his life with God in Mount Ephraim. So it gives us a location. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. They came to her. Why didn't they go to God? You know how many people turn their TV on and, and go to Joyce Myers, the woman, and yet will not seek God? Why didn't the nation of Israel go back to Shiloh, where the ark is, and say, God, there's something wrong here? 
One of the things I do, and I suggest many people do it, if you're up in the middle of the night or you're by yourself and no one's ever around with you, why can't you just ask God, say, God, is there anything between you and me in fellowship that I am doing that is hindering you and I together? And I can tell you one of the sins is three seconds flat. If it's even quicker than that, be patient. Instead of going to God, they go to a man. That is the foundation of the Catholic Church. You go to the man. And she sent and called Baru. Now, this is the third character. We got Caesarea, we got Deborah, and we got Baru. Now, I know I'm saying his name wrong. The son of Abonium, out of Kedish Naphtali, this Naphtali, that's the tribe of Israel. And sent unto him. Now watch this. This is why God had to call a woman. Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor. And what she's saying there to Baruch, Hasn't God told you to do something, brother? Didn't God tell you to go to Mount Tabor. So what we're getting here is God told him to do something and he is disobeying as the entire nation of Israel is doing right now. And take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Nethetai, Nethetali, and the children of Zebulun. They dwell together on the same side. God told him to go get 10,000 of those men and and he didn't do it. Like the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, and then you go talk to Christians, and they don't do it. And then you try to encourage them, you try to, you know, there's rewards, there, there's inheritance, and we're being prophets to them. And we're going to see the state that Israel is in. As we go on, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Caesarea, this is God speaking, the captain of Jabin's army, and his chariots that you're so afraid of, and his multitude, and I, God, will deliver him into thy hand. That's what God told him. He says, get, get your armies together, and I will give you victory. Psalm 33, 9. And you would think if God were to speak to you and say, hey, guess what I'm going to do with you? And it's all positive. Psalm 33, 9 and 10. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. Caesarea. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect, 500 chariots. You know, if God were to come to you and say, listen, I want you to go to this nation and I want you to be a missionary to this nation. And there will be converts. I will be with you. And there are many people who have been called to the missionary field and they don't go. Because they don't go in all the world and preach the gospel. I have seen so many, I, I, listen, I don't know how many churches I've been in. And I don't leave a church just because I leave a church. I leave a church once it starts getting doctrinally wrong and it starts changing the Bible and they start being worldly. But pews after pews with a butt in the pew, with a preacher with a Bible, and the Bible says go in all the world and, and preach the gospel and they don't do nothing.
That's Baruch. Go and draw, and I will give you victory. And he says, listen, we're going to do this together, and there's going to be victory, Baruch. And he speaks to the Christian. And I'm trying to bring judges to the church age today because it matches. Going all the world and preach the gospel. And you know what? I'll give you a crown. I will give you inheritance. They're not all going to listen, but few will. But not all. And God is being honest. And what it mean to the fact is that for a Christian, that somebody brought you the gospel, somebody brought the Bible to you and witnessed to you that you got saved, that you would ought to go to others. Unless you don't love God. And the nation of Israel in the book of Judges do not love God. So Deborah balls them out. I will deliver you at the end of verse 7, him into thy hand. That's God speaking to Baruch. Victory. And he doesn't go. Deborah has to call him. Say, hey, what did God tell you? And you know what she's doing? She's usurping the authority of a man, and she's not supposed to by New Testament scriptures. <laughs> We're not in the New Testament. But when God has to use a Jew to be balled out by a woman, that's a humil humiliating. Now, women, women had their proper place. They were the wives. They were the, you know, take care of the house. The man's the business. And we're so Americanized, we put Americanization into the Bible, we don't realize that this guy is being balled out by a woman. And we're even told her husband's name, and we don't even know nothing about her husband. So, verse 8. Now watch the condition of Israel. And Baruch said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, you panty waste. <laughs> and yet, what does the United States of America say today? What does the nation say? Sex, female. All right, you want to join which branch of the military? Army, Navy. We are here. The women are in the military forces. That's not what God designed a woman to do. And yet we have women in the come join us. And that's what Baruch is saying. You come with me. But our military says the same thing to the women. Come. You can come. We'll put you on the battlefield. If thou will go with me, then I will go. Needs his mommy. I know it's not his mother, but. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. After God said, I'll give you the victory, I need a woman to go with me. And so we have women in government today. That was never designed by God. And it's even prophesied in the Bible that the governments will be turned over to women and children. The next one, you'll start having children, according to the Bible, in government. What a condition. And yet, it's the same condition of America today. I'm not picking on America. I'm just reading the Bible verse by verse. and That's why we started with Genesis 1, working our way. You can't say, oh, I picked up this video and you're hammering me. No, we're just, yesterday we did chapter 3, the day before we did chapter 2, today chapter 4. So, if you won't go with me, I won't go. And she said, I will surely go with thee. Notwithstanding, the journey that thou shalt, the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. You ain't going to get no glory out of this at all. You could have. It could have been. Look what Baruch did. He conquered this man, Caesarea. But it won't happen. For the Lord shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. Oh, 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 that's even worse. You're being guided and scolded by a woman. You have asked a woman to join you into battle. And now a woman's going to get the gratification. 
And Deborah rose and went with Baruch to Kadesh. And Baruch, you know, everyone wonder, it says her husband, where was it? Verse 4, Lapid, whatever his name is. Where is he? Uh, honey, no, you don't need to go into battle. You stay right here and make me dinner. Let me go into battle at least. Weird. Verse 10. And Barak called Zeppelin and Naphtali to Kadesh. Calls the tribes over. And he went up with 10,000 men. He wouldn't obey God unless he had a woman. At his feet. And Deborah went with, went up with him. And he burned the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobad. Now, that is... Watch, the father-in-law of Moses. You realize how many names that guy has? Hobad here. Uh, one starts with J. I forget that name. But here he is. Jethro. Hobad, the father-in-law of Moses. So here is Moses' family. Had severed himself from the Kenites. Kenites are of Moses' father-in-law. Here's Heber. He separated himself from his parent, from his family, and pitched his tent into onto the plain of Zadim, which is by Kadesh. And they showed Caesarea that Barak the son of Abanum was going up to Mount Tabor. So they told Caesarea, uh "Oh, here comes these men." And Caesarea gathered together all his chariots. Even 900 chariots of iron, which they were afraid of, in verse 3. And all the people that were with him, from Harisheth of the Gentiles unto the river of Keshu. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sethur into thy hand. Is not the Lord going out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomforted Caesarea. And all his chariots, all your 900 chariots. Look, look. What did Israel forget with these 900 chariots? The Red Sea. The Red Sea. What did God do to the chariots of the Egyptians? He just he popped off the hubcaps. The wheels fell off, and they find that they found those wheels today in the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. They're still there, but the, the chariot riders are not. Isn't God great? It's true. And all his host, the host of uh, Caesarea, with the edge of the sword before Barak, so the Caesarea lightened down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. He not, we already read. Barak's not going to get the, get the claim to, to Caesarea because, you know, he's a womanish, feminist kind of guy. But Barak pursued after the chariots, and after the host, unto Harshavith of the Gentiles. All the hosts of Caesarea fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. What happened to the 500 chariots of iron? It looks like it was gone in one afternoon. I guess God is mighty powerful. Yeah. How be it? Caesarea fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, or Jael, the wife of Heber. Now this is that woman who's going to get the credit. The Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor, that's the king over the captain Caesarea, and the house of Heber the Kenite. So here's a league. So is going to run to this tent where they're friends. He knows this house because they're known of the king. This is Moses' family. And Jehu went out to meet Caesar, Caesarea and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in unto me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. That's, that's a coat robe kind of thing i don't really know how much more expressive than that they say it's thick and heavy so I, I wouldn't say a shawl but it's thick and heavy and he said unto her 
Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty, been running, tired. And she opened a bottle of milk. There were bottles of milk in B.C. 1296. How's that? And there's also bottles of water in the Bible. Now, milk is a sedative. A T R Y P T O P H A N, whatever that. However, they always got to come with it. He's tired, and she's she's giving him a milk. She's going to try to put him to sleep. I wonder if she even warmed it. She opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink, and covered him. She wants him to go to sleep. Again, he said unto her, "Stand in the door of the tent." And it shall be when any man does come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say, No. It's a lie. And tell you, Heber's wife, who separated from his family of Moses, took a nail of the tent. Okay? And took a hammer in her hand. And went softly onto him. He did see her tiptoeing. He's asleep. And smoked the nail into his. Now look at the ass temples. Now you got a temple on your right side and you got a temple on your left side. It, the Bible, the Holy Spirit says, excuse me, I know it's it says S. She fastened it onto the ground. She went from the top of his head to the bottom of his head, right into the dirt. It went right through his right through his forehead. Almost a type of a big giant that gets rocked to sleep by what David. Those stupid arrows that they wear. Yeah, stupid arrows that they wear through their heads. And the Antichrist is going to get a wound in his right eye. So if you were to ask me where this nail would go in first, I would say according to the scriptures, the right side to the left. According to the scriptures. Absolutely, what would you say it would be? I can't tell you. But if he's the type of Antichrist, from right to left. Fasten in his temples, plural, and fasten it to the ground. I mean, she nailed him. Where did you get the expression when somebody gets hit, nailed him? King James, 1611 Bible, chapter 4, verse 21, and I can just imagine what the modern Bibles say. So you probably, I don't know, I never looked, I don't care. But nailed it is a King James Bible. There it is. It was a woman. And he was fast asleep and weary. <laughs> so he died. He died in his sleep. Thanks to this woman, Jael. And behold, as Baruch per pursued Caesarea, Jerry came out to meet him. And she's always coming out of that tent meeting people. I wouldn't want to meet her. She came out to meet him and said unto him, Come. Come. And I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. Now how did she know that? God told her. So this woman obeyed God where Baruch didn't obey God at all until he had a woman speak. That is the spiritual condition of Israel in Judges 4. The women are listening, but the men are not. The man whom thou seekest. And when he came in, into her, listen, she don't have TV. It's not on CNN or anything. This is God speaking to her. Behold, Cesare lay dead. And the nail was in his temple. She never took it out. She just, boom. Again, nailed. Bible term. So, God subdued. I thought she did it. I thought the army got rid of those 900 chariots. No, it's God. God gets the victory. God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Cana, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Cana. His army's gone. 
until they had destroyed Jabin, the king of uh, Canaan. So he gets killed. Their army's been wiped out. So they go back and kill him. So we're at rest again. But look at the condition. And it's no different from... Now, come on. We'll go back over here. In verse 6, it says, go, uh, it says, go and draw. For the Christian, it says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. He doesn't listen. So, a woman is put in charge. A woman does God's work. Do you dare to turn on the television today and see the condition of the church out when they're not listening to God? And they got their favorite women talking, and you got women on television shows sitting down at a table, and they're talking all kinds of junk they don't know nothing about, and even and try to include God in it? That they don't know anything about God? And that there's, there's a TV dial where you can listen to women preachers, even though the Bible says in the New Testament, in the church age, they're not to be doing. A woman, Deborah, has no business to be on the war battlefield in the Old Testament. A woman has no business to be on the television preaching to men, a serpent authority. And if you question her on her, on her uh, Twitter or whatever that thing is called, she will block you. I'm one of many people. Who blocked you? What's her name? Oprah? No. Uh, Joyce Myers. Uh, Joyce Myers? I just asked her, said, what do you do with this verse here that says you're not to usurp the authority and you're blocked? <laughs> wow. I'm what, one of four of my friends that's been done that. <laughs> so, here's the condition. The Christians are not listening to God and the women are stepping in and there are women pastors where the Bible says the pastor is to be a husband and one wife. So how do we take care of that today? We allow the women to marry and that's another abomination. As we study judges, we're not only studying Israel. We are studying the cause of America and the cause of the world today, presently. And by the time you get Jeremiah, Judah is wiped out. Church will be wiped out. The Bible says church is not getting better. 